interesting. Ibrahim, what, what's your story? It's much later, of course. Yeah, of course. And I don't, <laughs> seem, I, don't think to, uh, I don't seem to have anything to add <laughs> from what they do. You uh, have a lot. Yes, yes, I saw him from far. Yeah. I know I, I never had any personal, not a single day. I think I started being a, a big journalist when he was already a president. So, How was it covering him? Difficult. Because uh, perhaps it was very vague as a journalist. You didn't know where the story was. And uh, we had come from Moy, who used to have the prepared script and then delve into off the cuff. And that's where our story always used to come from. But Kibaki, here, Kibaki comes and he rightly observed. He reads the speech and he leaves you hanging out there. Or uh, in those very rare occasions when he made those out of uh, off the script mark, remarks, it was the kind of things you have heard about uh, Binadamu, uh, Mushezi, Mubumbavu, and all that. Yes. So he was, uh, as a newsmaker, he was a very complicated guy to me to capture, to understand what he was saying. Yeah, and uh, I remember one time in the twilight of his presidency, when he went to Kitui and the issue about who he was supposed to endorse cropped up. So he says something and uh, the then government spokesman says he has endorsed Kalonzo. You know, he has to come up and say, no, I didn't say that. You know? yeah. So the confusion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it was deliberate from what they're saying. He was a brilliant guy. But who went out of his way to deliberately <laughs> confuse. mislead or confuse? Is, 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 is it to be, would it be a proper profile uh, to say that you're dealing here with a very brilliant man who was reclusive, yes, but also he knew what the public wanted was a persona of sorts. And so he deliberately fed this persona of a coward, of someone who did not, you know, care so much about what the public says about him. Or what was happening. The, I would say that uh, we have two Kibakis. Kibaki post-2001 uh, accident. Obviously, it slowed him down and brought him health issues. And most of the Kibaki that many young journalists like uh, Oruk have seen was that is, a, one. is a post-accident Kibaki. Oh, right. He was never the same man. Mm -hmm. I covered him before the accident. That mm -hmm. was a real Kibaki. Had he maybe not had the accident, we don't know what could have happened. Maybe he could have completed like that, the Kibaki we knew. Mm -hmm. The one who went to the Kitui uh, ra rally on the day he came and had an accident at Machakos. I'll tell you why. In Parliament, the, I was a political writer, but not a parliamentary reporter. So, but I would go to parliament a lot to get my interviews. He was a rare one. Among few others of that time, when he stood to speak, and the guy has no notes, few, zero, almost zero points of order to interrupt him. Mm -hmm. And he spoke, and he was articulate. And he would, he would finish and get a few challenges. Former... Kapenguria MP Joseph Lotodo lifted his hand and, and told the speaker point of information when Kibaki was on the floor. <laughs> Kibaki shook his head. Mr. Speaker, point of information from that head of Lotodo. <laughs> it was very embarrassing but funny. Yeah. He spoke well. Uh, during the Donde Bill, which was seeking to reduce uh, interest rates on banks. Control. He, con he contributed immensely and he said if ever this government changes that should be a priority to reduce interest rates. And you remember when he took over, one of the first things that were done was to reduce interest rates on banks mm -hmm. and, the gov and government stopped taking loans from banks. I think we had a Kibaki who did not finish the way he started and you can't blame it on him uh, it's fate of nature.